This is part two, the setup process, of a four-part rough and ready QuickCast series on making the iPad an affordable interactive whiteboard. Let's just jump right in. So here's the process. After properly installing ink to go and air display on your computer, just as you normally would, make sure your computer is connected to your projection device. And then you have to connect your computer to your Wi-Fi network. In order for this process to work, you must have a Wi-Fi network. Then you're going to turn on Air Display, and I'll show you that in a moment. And then you'll launch Ink to Go, another application. All of this done on your computer. On your iPad, you'll connect the iPad to the very same Wi-Fi network that your computer is using. Now, if this is a school setting, you may want to consider having a private network set up between your computer and your iPad, especially if there are many people in your building using Wi-Fi, because you're going to need as much bandwidth um, as possible to get the uh, display to project properly and responsively between your iPad and what everyone is seeing on the board. So I, in my example that I'm doing right now, and I'll show you this in a moment, have set up a, a private network between my computer and my iPad device. The next thing you do is launch Air Display on your iPad. After you've done this once, you can set it up to automatically detect when your iPad has Air Display on, and then your computer and your iPad will just immediately connect and be happy. In Air Display, you want to make sure that you have your iPad selected. Now, the reason I mention this is because one of the things we're going to see in just a moment is that Air Display will allow you to connect multiple iPads to the display. So perhaps you could have a classroom set of iPads and you can pick which iPad will use Air Display. So perhaps a student will demonstrate and you just tell Air Display, now go to iPad number seven and it shows what's being done with iPad number seven. So you want to start off by making sure that if it doesn't automatically, your iPad is the one connected. Again, once you've done this once and you set it up to automatically detect, from then on, mine has always just automatically turned on mirroring so that what's on my computer display is mirrored onto this additional display, my iPad. And you want to make sure that it's your computer resolution is set to be the very same as your iPad's resolution. So let's look at it. So I just switched between Keynote, which is Apple's version of uh, PowerPoint, to my computer desktop. So let's start by going up to the very top up here. And this is Air Display in my menu and I had it set to be on. I could turn it off, but if I did, I would lose control from my iPad. And I have my phone also connected. So I could switch between my phone controlling this, which would be a very small user interface, or my iPad, but I'm not gonna mess with that right now. And if I were to open up um, the Air Display Preference panel, this right down here is what we would see. So here, again, I'm controlling all of this that you're watching using my iPad. I have my phone device and my iPad device. And under settings, I can have move windows back to air display, which you want, I think. Enable touch input, which you want, which allows me to touch and move things around and do things. And then I always have it automatically checked for updates. Here's the automatically connect that I was telling you about earlier. And perhaps, I don't know what the practical limit is here. I'm fairly confident that there would be one. But like I said, perhaps you could have an entire class set of iPads listed here that you have set up and then switch back and forth between either here connecting to the device or in your menu settings, they would appear up there as well. Let me show you really quickly how to set up um, a private network between your computer and your iPad. I have my network preferences 
showing in my menu bar. So I'm going to go down and turn on the airport. It's going to connect to my home office network, but I really don't want that. I want to set up this private network. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to tell it to create a network. So I click on create network right here. And I'm going to just call it private. And I'm going to say that it has to be password protected because I don't want everyone in the building, if I were in a school, to be able to log into my network and start using my bandwidth. So I'm going to create um, a password. I'm going to replicate the password. It's not rocket science. It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero is all I was using. And you'll see now that the icon has changed. Now I have a private network set up. Now this network is available on my iPad. So now I'm going over to my iPad and I'm clicking on settings, taking a screenshot now of the existing settings where it's connected to my office network. And I touch on Wi-Fi and now listed in the um, settings here for Wi-Fi networks is private, which is the one I just created. So I touch on it, it's asking me for the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and join, and we're now connected to that network. I go to Air Display on my machine, I turn it on. It is now going to automatically use this private Wi-Fi network that we set up and called private. But it doesn't see any devices because I have not launched Air Display on my iPad. I touch Air Display. Ooh, you can notice that it changed right here and says no devices selected. I click on it, it now sees my iPad. I click on iPad. It changes my screen resolution and now my iPad is showing the exact same thing that my display is showing here. I have, whoops, let's go back to my display settings, which I also have showing in my menu bar just because it's much more convenient. I have mirroring turned on and you'll see that I actually have three displays connected now to this machine. The main display and display number two, which are always connected to the machine. And display number three is now my iPad. Now notice that display number three only has a resolution of 1024 by 768. That's important. If I change one of these, then everything is going to look strange on my iPad if it will work at all. I haven't tried it and I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. Um, but I want to make sure that all of my displays have the same resolution and that it is the resolution of my iPad. And my display, it says, is stretched. So when it's projecting this from my computer's monitor, it's going to look a little stretched, a little oblong, um, which it really isn't. But because the iPad's resolution is that, it has to make the screen that way. So that's how you set up a private network and double check your display settings to make sure that they're mirroring the same thing to all of your display devices. If I turned off mirroring, then my iPad would actually become in this situation with three monitors attached, a third monitor for my computer. I would have my main display, my second display, and then my iPad display, each adding additional screen real estate for me to use on my computer. Um, now in Air Display, I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna share with you their website. And this is the Air Display website that you can go to. I'll zoom in once I finish the screencast um, on the web address so that you can see it. It's available for Mac users on the um, App Store. No wires needed, that's what's so cool. Uh, I think everybody knows by now that the iPad 2 has HDMI out, which you can convert on the other end to VGA and plug your iPad 2 into your projection device. Um, but then you're tethered and, and it's 
problematic and you can't write on the screen. But this using Air Display allows the iPad to become an additional monitor. And when you turn mirroring on, what you see on your iPad is what you see on the computer screen. And what you see on the computer screen is what you see on the iPad. Um, it says orient it any way that you want. Um, I would encourage you to lock your orientation on your iPad. I got some unexpected results when I tilted it too much once and um, it just didn't work like I thought it was going to work. Um, and this is really not what I don't think Air Display was designed to do to make the iPad a control surface for an interactive whiteboard type of setting in a classroom, but it can definitely be used as a control surface. And so there's all the information that you'll want um, looking for specifics about your computer platform and so, and so forth. The other computer program that makes the magic happen is ink to go And what you see here at the bottom is the ink to go toolbar. I have launched ink to go on this computer and it gives me the ability to write on top of my display. Ink to go combined with air display is the magic interactive whiteboard on the iPad. And I'll demonstrate that in part three, the demonstration. Be sure to watch.